<laughs> oh man, what do I do, right? <laughs> I need a couple teachers. I want to do this like straight. I will. Just, just. Oh, hi there. My name's Annie O'Hanna, and I'm a secondary school teacher at Ellie Matheson Secondary in the Surrey School District. I'm a proud union member, uh, a social justice act advocate, and today I'm going to be taking the ice bucket challenge. I just say I'm a bit embarrassed. You caught me. I was on my way to get one of those unlimited massages Christy Clark keeps talking about. Yeah, I was really looking forward to that. Here's the problem. Christy lied. There's no such thing as unlimited massages. Well, I guess I have to go to my plan B, go the athlete way, take a nice ice cold bath. But I'm on the strike line, 6 a.m. to 4 p.m. Muscles can get kind of sore, right? So this ice bath should help me off a bit. So my plan though, as much as the ALS challenge was great and I will be donating money to that charity, uh, but I'm also going to take a more BCTF approach to things. I want to try to clear up some of the misinformation that's out there about the strike, about the dispute, and about what teachers really want for our kids, for the parents, for every BC resident. So I'm going to give you the top 10 facts, I guess you can call them, about this dispute. So let's start with number one. The BC Liberals could use that $40 voucher on themselves for some math tutoring. And let me tell you why. When they tell you that our wages are way out there, way outside the pattern, they're actually lying. Over a five-year contract, what we're asking for averages out to 1.6%. And I want you to think about that 1.6%. Does that cover the increase in your bills? Does that cover the increase in the cost of living here in BC? So I hope you give that a thought the next time you hear the outlandish numbers being thrown out there by the media. So let's go with bucket number one, shall we? All right, bucket number one. Go for it. <laughs> oh, yes, sorry. Okay. Oh, gosh. Number one. Woo! Woo! Okay, awesome. Thank you. Number two. The last time I checked, we live in a democracy, and our representatives that represent us, our MLAs, are either in Victoria or they're in their uh, sorry, constituency offices. The fact that some members have chosen to close their offices to people who just very simply want to say we want our schools open is undemocratic and wrong. And that calls for not only recalls, but maybe even an election. It's time that we stood up for our democracy, not just as union members, but as BC citizens and voters. Bucket number two, please. Right over the head, go for it. Oh. This is good. <laughs> we have won, not one, but two court cases. Would you sign a contract if the other side told you that you could, uh, that they couldn't uphold those court cases? We live in a country that is democratic and that is an autonomous judicial branch. We should be following the court decisions. When two people are, sorry, um, the reason for the arbitration is that we've been in negotiation for over 560 days and nothing has come of it. When two people are in a dispute for that long, usually you call a third party. It's called the police. I think it's time we call for a third party to actually get through these issues and not sign an unconstitutional contract. Next bucket, please. Front Woo! All right. Number four, when it comes to arbitration, the doctor's contract that you might have been hearing about the last couple days is nothing like what the BCTF is actually asking for. If an arbitrator were to give us what we want, the, contra uh, the contract for the doctors was actually, and the numbers are all over the place, from 300 to 400 million dollars over a one year period. And that's what saw the tax increase. Our numbers cost out around 60 million dollars a year. Not a large amount of money when you consider that this government has spent millions upon millions fighting one single organization. Your taxpayer dollars are going for false advertising, websites that are actually against the code of ethics of the BC Liberal Party, and very, I don't know, I guess we can call it bullying behavior uh, towards a whole class of people that are there to teach your kids. So enough is enough. Bucket number five, or number four. Okay, number five. If you work for a private company, a mom and pop shop, a blue collar job in natural resource extraction, 
Your work conditions include health and safety, codes of conduct, proper training, and good equipment. These should never, ever be called added benefits. A teacher's workplace is the classroom, and the learning conditions we want for our students are one-on-one -on -one support, proper equipment, and personalized learning. These are, in fact, our working conditions. They are the exact same as yours. Your child's education is not an extra benefit. Number five. Oh. We can leave that one to last. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, so I'm going to call up a parent now by the name of Anna Brand, and I want her to give her side of things for number six. Hello, my name is Anna Brand, and I'm a parent of the school. Um, I don't have a great uh, 12 this year, but if I had a grade 12 kid in this school, I would be really upset and I'd be knocking at your door, Christy Clark, because kids are wasting precious time, time that you're not going to make up on them or the teachers. I think it's time to get this done and kids need to go back in the school. Thank you. Let me just go. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> okay. <laughs> Your child is underfunded a thousand dollars compared to the national average. Learning outcomes are high because teachers, which actually are surrounding behind the camera, are actually helping to fund a system out of their own pockets. This spending has no special tax credit or tax benefit. Teachers simply want their students to be funded around the national average of nine thousand dollars a year per student. Why are we devaluating children in, in BC? And why do we think BC children are not worth as much as any other province? Go for it. Oh God. <laughs> you know the Navy SEALs do this activity? They put people in freezing water, people, I mean soldiers, and they ask them questions, math, tactical stuff, everything. And it's meant to prove that no matter how cold you get, you should have your reasoning intact. So I think it goes to show that as cold as I am right now, I can still make way about this dispute. I should say something that maybe our negotiator should be able to figure something out as well. The next point, here's what teachers want. We want learning supports for students with special needs. Some students are without support in their classrooms. Teachers want to teach in classrooms that are not overcrowded. Teachers would like to see all schools have librarians and counselors, and that is not the fact right now. Teachers would like for students not to have to wait for two, three years for psych ed testing. I know parents don't want that either. That's oh, right, parents want that as well. How could our government seriously stonewall such simple demands? <laughs> Two more, right? One more. Okay. Two more. Two more. You're right. <laughs> this one's really important to me. Education is a right, not a privilege. When young people, sorry, <laughs> when young people like Malala Yousafzai gets shot in the head for trying to get an education, we rally to the cause. We fight. To bring them education. We free the masses by giving them education. We, we hear this over and over again. Don't BC residents, rich, poor, First Nations, immigrants, everyone, we all have the right to be educated. This is what we are fighting for. It is not a privilege. It should never be a privilege. It is a right. Okay. <laughs> One more. I know. I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> I know Christy Clark keeps saying that we started this fight, but actually we didn't. And I'm not going to get into the whole chronology of it. But this has been going on for decades. But most egregiously in 2002, 
when teachers' contracts were stripped of class size and composition language and the right to negotiate for them. What was taken from us was not just a union thing. What was taken from all of us is the foundation of what BC's future rests upon. You cannot build a solid house, a solid future, a solid economy without a solid foundation. Our kids deserve a free, equal, and well-funded education system, period. Oh, God. All right, so to all the union members, hold the line. We will get there and think long term. No matter what happens in the coming weeks, believe me, the pain will come for them in a couple years. Hold the line. I got to get back to my picket line, but seriously, I could use a bathroom break right now. <laughs> Okay, the challenge part, uh, <laughs> the most important bit. Okay, so my challenge goes out to, and yes, I'm putting my job on the line for this, <laughs> the administration of L.A. Matheson Secondary. Uh, Mr. Cemento, Mr. Boros, Mr. Muir, and Mr. Valera. Um, the, sorry, Superintendent of Surrey, Jordan Tinney, and our, all our trustees at the Surrey School Board. And let me tell you, be as creative as you want. Do whatever you want. It's not about necessarily dumping buckets of ice over your head. Uh, be creative. But here's what my real challenge is. Get on tape. Put it out there. Whether it takes 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever. But do it. Show that you care about the parents, the students, and the teachers that you preside over. That's your job description. Show us that you actually are doing your job. Thank you.